<laughs> Welcome to Meet Your Monsters. If you've ever had Chick-fil-A by cutting up a dead hooker, then this is the podcast for you. <laughs> my name is Aver Macon. These are my friends. Kathleen. Oh, Matt. Colby. Derek. I'm just thinking how funny it would be if nobody said anything. <laughs> These are my friends. <laughs> and, then, and then just keep going by yourself. <laughs> I would, too. I was like, fuck you guys. Okay. Uh, for you at home, Meet Your Monsters is a podcast in which I show my friends horror movies that I love, and we find out if they love them, too, or if they just think my taste in movies sucks. This week's movie was the 2000 Citizen Toxie from Troma. It was written by Trent Haga, Patrick Cassidy, Gabriel Friedman, and Lloyd Kaufman. Directed by Lloyd Kaufman and, uh, and starring David, Maddie. God damn, my handwriting is bad. I really gotta take the time to type this shit up. <laughs> Dr. Aiken. <clears throat> yeah. Toxie was played by two guys, because there was the guy who was Toxie and the guy who did his voice. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Heidi Jusen was Sarah, <laughs> and Paul's Something I Can't Read was Sergeant Kabuki Man. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor guys. All right. <sighs> Good start. <laughs> okay, now I can't remember. Okay, when I I first saw Toxic Avenger a long time ago when I was a kid, and I imagine I'll tell that story when we watch the first Toxic Avenger. For this one, I don't remember uh, how I saw. It. I think I think this girl I used to work with told me about a movie where a girl pummeled a handicapped kid with her breasts, <laughs> and I'm like, I have to see this fucking movie, <laughs> and I did, and it was Citizen Toxie. Okay, so what did you guys think of Citizen Toxie? I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I liked it too. <laughs> I've always liked it, as I told you guys earlier. I have a Citizen Toxie poster signed by oh, Lloyd no, Kaufman. No, bitch, you do. I forgot you even <laughs> yeah, had that. Yeah, and that, that I Heart the Monster Hero shirt. Yeah. yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah, I've, I've always... Love the Toxie, and I used to. Uh, do, you, do, you, do we watch the cartoons together? Oh, okay, I, I used to love the cartoon. I was the other brother they had until the unfortunate accident. <laughs> yeah. But they tried to clean it up by making it the Toxic Crusader. Yeah. And he fought pollution and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Follow us through the darkness of our wasted and festering memories as we struggle to the re- to recall the movie we just watched with this week's sinister synopsis. <laughs> Okay, this brief synopsis comes to us from IMDb. The Toxic Avenger must defend defend his friends and Tromaville from his own evil alternate alternate universal doppelganger, the Noxious Offender. <laughs> um, which I think that's a fucking crazy name. From Toxic Avenger to Noxious Offender. Yeah, <laughs> it's so clever. It's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could tell by my shitty jokes at the beginning that I'm easily amused <laughs> by bad comedy. Um... But yeah, that's just it. The the Toxic Avenger is trying to save a school from the Diaper Mafia, and a giant bomb explodes and sends him into an alternate Tromaville and and Amortville. yeah, and and, and, and Amortville. The, <laughs> and the uh, bad Toxic Avenger goes to Tromaville and starts killing everybody, starting with the police and the chief of police and Ron Jeremy, who was the mayor of Tromaville. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I think what happened it wasn't it what the what the scientist said was that both bombs went off at the same time yeah. and it like weakened the weakened the <laughs> the fields or whatever yeah, or something. yeah yeah okay so now the fun starts with everyone's favorite pieces and parts my favorite part was when the handicapped boy was pummeled with that girl's titties. <laughs> <laughs> I like the part I've never like seen a beating like that in my life. But. I like when he's pulling that guy's guts out, and like if if his heart stops, I'll trigger the bomb. He has his heart in his hand, so he just stuffs it back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the uh, when he like power bombs the guy, and his head shoots out his ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty. It's pretty great. It's hard to pick. Cause there are so many moments yeah. I went ha when they happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that the the I my fair part is I felt like I could have afforded to make this movie. <laughs> it's good. Like the cop car was like a like a ninety five Saturn, <laughs> yeah. and that was footage that they've used in like three or four trauma movies. I've seen that same car chase several times. Really? Oh yeah, the Tromeo and Juliet car chase was that same one. It Wait, was... you're talking about the car flipping over, aren't you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But not the Saturn. Well, yeah, the cop car oh, was oh, was yeah. like a red Saturn. Yeah, it looked it looked like our sister's car, yeah. which is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many good 
good parts in here. Uh, just like oh, every time he kills someone, really. Like, yeah. The noxious of offender first came through, and he's just like everybody's cheering him. He's walking through the crowd, just ripping their limbs <laughs> off, and throwing them. What about you guys? Uh, I like the two fetuses fighting in the womb. That was cool. That was I love that they both had mops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, there was a lot of just some disgusting gore in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There were some very creative things that happened, like Derek said. You know, <laughs> yeah, pounding <laughs> someone's head through their ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And lard ass eating. <laughs> he, I like that he coats the bomb in peanut butter before he eats it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you can't just eat a bomb. You gotta. <laughs> the the best part about this movie was is they knew it was gonna be shitty, so they went for it. They just tried to make it like the craziest shit you've ever seen, and fun. You know, they went for yeah. it fun, like like when the noxi- noxious offenders. My wife was deaf and like the translator for like her sign language, and <laughs> she said they're topless. Yeah. yeah. Eating pizza and shit. Yeah. I also. Yeah, though, I also like to at the beginning where in Toxie sneaks into the school disguised as a bikini model yeah. <laughs> the, from the bikini news or whatever, which of course his giant frame could never fit in her tiny little body, so it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then he, even the weird porno like setup where he finds that big boob girl and tries to get him to, get, tries to, get him to hook yeah. up with his wife who's blind. And was, <laughs> the whole thing was just. As crazy as you would want a shitty movie to be. Yeah. And then he got transported back to the 1970s porno and he's getting <laughs> the bus <laughs> getting banged in the ass. The, the talking head was one of my favorite things about this movie, too. What was his name again? Uh, I can't okay. remember. It's something weird. I like that their portrayal of retarded people is just them twitching their fingers. <laughs> That's it. That's their own. And, and talking slow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but was the uh, Tito? <laughs> yeah, Tito, uh, yeah. the the retarded revenger. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I like how he was like a rebel at school. He had yeah, a jacket and did heroin in the closet. <laughs> Second red rebel retard. Hands down, the most offensive movie we've ever watched. <laughs> if they they really did offend every single big issue. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. if he, talk, school shootings. Yeah, I was talking. There's a guy in blackface, that. like, because I'd never seen any of the Toxic Avengers movies, and like when it first started off, it's just gonna be like. I just thought I was offended because I didn't realize like how satirical it was gonna get. Hmm. Yeah, because it starts off with them going like to school for retards, and it was bad, and then it, it just never stopped. Every sort of abortion <laughs> joke, like they had the teacher strung out, we're gonna play pinata with her pregnant belly. Yeah. Just any anything that you would think is disturbing. School shootings, which of course were really taboo in 2000 when this came out. Yeah. And, uh, nobody nobody would touch that. Except for fucking trauma, because yeah. mm-hmm. they say fuck it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did a good job making it look like it was made in the 1980s, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional, or yeah. just... Uh, <laughs> That's just all the yeah, shit yeah. they found. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably all stuff from their 80s movies that they just recycled. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, even the color correction and, like, the... Like, they took the time to correct anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think... I don't know. I think they did, though. Well, you I, know... Abe had a story about how they came up with Troma, the name of their film company, and it was that they went there with some cool-sounding name, and it was taken, so they just went, uh, Troma. Well, and I, like, I thought to myself, why wouldn't they go home, think of a better one, and come back like, okay, we're gonna name it this. And I think that's kind of how they made this movie. They're like, well, we don't really have, like, this around. We're like, well, fuck it, just use whatever you got. Make it a big penis monster, whatever. <laughs> well, if you read any of his books, he, he actually says that what you should do is when you're writing your script, write for things that you already have yeah. to cut your budget. So if you know you have a car, write that car into it. If you've got a three-foot penis, mon- penis monster puppet, write it in there because, yeah. fuck it, you can use it. So it's definitely strategic. They, they're, <laughs> they're doing something specific. And like you said, they might have done a lot with the, with the coloring in the film. I joke really saying good. that they're that they're just hap- you know, slapping it together, which they kind of are in some point, but yeah. it sure is fun. It is fun. Yeah. For each movie, Kathleen digs through all the dirt and slime of the filthy internet to bring us this week's terrifying trivia. All right. There have been four live-action Toxic Avenger movies. This one was the fourth. Um, Hugh Hefner was originally going to be in the Troma Dew segment, there was even a shot of him saying, only the Tuxi Avenger knows for sure in the original teaser trailer. Unfortunately, a cease and desist order from Hefner's lawyers um, <laughs> forced Tromer to remove any and all visual depictions of him from the final film. However, yeah. they were still allowed to use the scens that they had filmed at the Playboy Mansion. 
<laughs> so that's the actual play by Manson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, with all the dead people. <laughs> um, was that the grotto they were yeah. in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The filthiest place ever. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where it's like three parts semen, one so, part so water. So much DNA. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Toxic Avenger is now an off Broadway play music or off Broadway musical. Nice. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> Uh, there is also a Toxie novel that came out in November. All the literary types. Mm. <laughs> of 2014? Mm-hmm. Wow. We already kind of mentioned this, but to complete the Toxie Empire, there was a Toxic Avenger cartoon that used to air on Saturdays from 1990 to 1993. Hmm. This is a pretty good run. Three years? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Not bad at all. They had toys and everything. I, my friend Nick had bought a bunch and we'd play with them all the time. eBay, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't think he had the tutu, though. Okay, it's time once again to meet your monster. Alright, so this is defined as an atomic mutation monster. He, uh, in the original, they didn't really explain Noxies origin, but in the original Toxic Avenger he's a little nerdy fella, he gets picked on a lot and he gets thrown into toxic waste in the back of a truck and that turned him into a big, strong, mutated monster. Uh, Toxie was the hero in this movie and Noxie was his opposite so he did all kinds of evil stuff, just like the evil Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. No, he wasn't, well, I don't know what he was in the I think he's still he Sergeant was, Kabuki Man. But just not Sergeant Kabuki Yeah, but it's not NYPD. NYPD. Yeah. <laughs> um... And so, uh, the, and he was, his powers were super strength. He had the ability to pile drive someone's head through their own ass mm. and disembowel people. Um, see, <laughs> Seems like he can also shapeshift. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a, <laughs> one of his powers. Um, he was, he, Toxie defeated Noxie by disemboweling him. Now, who had the j- big penis monster? I'm trying to remember who tried to, because Noxie. Noxie tried to butt rape him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then he turned around and disemboweled him. He yeah. pumped it until it blew up. Uh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, that's our that's our monster. The Toxic Avenger is a atomic mutation. And he was even featured in John Landis' book as part of the atomic mutations. Okay, here on Meet Your Monsters, we like to examine all forms of depravity. And so now for the mathematically perverted, the Colby Count. Now, this blows the doors off of Piranha 3D, of uh, which was our leader for a while, and of Hatchet for how many boobs. I was going to say, like, your calculator explodes. So it's got, <laughs> yeah. it's got the most boobs and the most deaths, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So there was 36 boobs in this movie. And there were, let me get this straight because I need the tally marks. So I got a 51, let me make sure that's right. Yeah, 51 bodies. And three vaginas. And at least Damn. one wiener, because that fat guy went running down the thing with his wang out. Yeah, That's sure. Weird. We'll throw the mm-hmm. dick in there, too, for the ladies. There's monster <laughs> dick. There's, yeah. like, three dicks, three naked dudes, because there was a oh, dude yeah. dancing naked in the, the grotto. grotto. Right, right. That's I think right, it, yeah. yeah. This movie was loaded think, down think, with it. Think about maybe even four dicks. Yeah, four <laughs> dicks, sure. <laughs> so think about that if you're out there and you're wondering if you should watch Toxic Avenger. Possibly four dicks. Yeah, I possibly mean, four dicks. At here, least what? What'd you say? Thirty-six boobs. Or something? Thirty-six boobs <laughs> with three vaginas. Nice. Mm. There were th- there were three completely nude women in this movie. Excellent. It was excellent. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it, Lloyd. <laughs> and the thing about it too is that we're not saying just like bodies like oh there's a body there. This was like people got their heads blown up. People got yeah. smashed into walls. People got their heads cut off. It yeah. was awesome. Very mm-hmm. creative deaths. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to beat this one ever. No. Like, I can't picture another movie I can no. think of. There's a lot of, like, death and say, um, Dead Alive or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we're going to beat well, this yeah, one. And Dead Alive had the record for goriest movie because they used the most fake blood. Yeah. That was the that was what they judged it by. But this movie, <laughs> maybe they didn't count this one because that was a lot yeah. of fake blood. Be, it, it, I'd be hard-pressed to find a movie that could take this one. On either boobs or blood. I mean, when he literally just walks down the street killing every person that he sees. <laughs> <laughs> like, just randomly, like, fucking cutting, like, karate chopping people's heads off and you shit. Know, like, I, I don't think there's going to be another movie that can top I, that body count. I thought they did was smart, too, as he went to an alternate dimension with the same people so he could kill the same guy twice. <laughs> so yeah. <it's> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they killed all the, like, all the heroes... Yeah. Like the Dolphin Man and everything, and then the, like Noxie killed the heroes, and the Toxic Avenger killed yeah. the bad versions of them. Yeah, 
And then they didn't even have to change the props or the makeup. Yep. They just <laughs> do the same thing. And the, the, remember the guy, when the, the wife of the guy who had his head shoved up his ass and all stuff, when he ran to the alternate one, he says, Hey, wait a minute, I haven't seen you guys since I ripped your heart out and shoved your head up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it really is... Uh, it's a different kind of movie from a different studio, but it's definitely something it was, special. It was mm-hmm. a total goofball thing, and they had to take themselves seriously, and it was awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, the films we discuss in this podcast are horrifying, but sometimes real life is even more fucked up. Brace yourself for the nefarious news. So I intended on um, trying to, um, I don't know, class things up a bit with this, but I was going to try to find a, an actual um, article on maybe some of the science behind, like, you know, um, there, there's a lot of science on the actual, like, you know, the multiverse and how there's infinite universes and um, all that, and, like, it will, like, any like theorize the ways of possible interdimensional travel but it turns out like that the if you just type in interdimensional travel in google the first like hundred search results are just complete fucking nonsense <laughs> uh, from crazy people so i figured fuck it and we would just uh stay with the theme and just go with some crazy shit so this article that i find found proposes that um in 2012 um and nasa um had contact with alien beings they informed nasa that uh, nanoscale engineering was possible somehow out of that nasa was able to build interdimensional vehicles but um whenever uh, it proposes that all um interdimensional travel is only one way so um they've also contacted multiple other species and this one group of aliens i guess and um given them the same information and so any that's why whenever you see a ufo it's always a different one every time because that's there's no way that like um a group you know like that a group could keep going back and forth like it's not like a group of aliens visiting us it's just like random species that get this information are just shooting like through space and like random interdimensional travel and that's why we see them and then like we never see those same ones again I'd like to see so. some empirical study yeah <laughs> or peer reviewed studies I mean you think there's a dimension where our podcast is funny <laughs> yeah. oh. it's this one it's this dimension yeah. in the other dimension it's evil and yeah. they're they're the ones who are talking shit about these movies yeah they're the ones they're all wearing goatees the- my this Chick-fil-A is. joke killed. You guys are crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a good joke. Uh, so apparently this was in 2000, September of 2012. They have an exact date. Uh, and um, So engineers and space enthusiasts gathered at Hyatt Hotel. They had this meeting at a Hyatt Hotel where the aliens told them and gave them the, the capability and NASA revealed that within that in the next hundred years, this interdimensional travel will be possible. They couldn't have chose a classier place than a Hyatt hotel. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to a Hyatt. Yeah, I mean they got the catering, uh-huh. <laughs> continental. Breakfast. Yeah, everything is included. One price, you get the conference room, <laughs> catering. <laughs> I mean, it's NASA we're talking about here. They don't have a lot of (laughs) funds these days. Their budget did get cut. Yeah. Um, Was Dr. Tyson involved in this in any way? Because I'd like to hear his take on this. Fuck no. (laughs) 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 Hours of effort and creativity go into making a movie, and there's always some asshole just waiting to shit on it. And so on behalf of the underappreciated horror filmmakers, we are here to take revenge with the critical critique. My God. They've all gone. So it actually kind of blew my mind that there was even ratings on um, Rotten Tomatoes for this, um, and it has a 67%. This is a, ro- a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes for Citizen Toxie. But you yeah. can't be too surprised because we all like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. but I mean, we that we're us and they're them. <laughs> so not uh, very in-depth reviews, though. Uh, one of them is um, by Maitland McDonough, and uh, that's from TV Guide. And um, it's it's kind of the same shit, like how the same TV... How I found that TV Guide review um, from... Uh, for Gremlins. Uh, she says, Puerile, gross, and pandering to the lowest impulses of teenage boys. Like, none of us are Yeah, teenagers. fucking... <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, obviously, like, you couldn't have said anything more obvious. <laughs> like, oh, really? 
Really? Was it Maitland? Was it pandering to, to people like that? Oh, thank you so much. People like Lloyd Kaufman because he's a good, genuine dude and just does his best. He's a good guy. And how many friends does he think Marley Matlin has if she made a movie that would come and be in there? Yeah. Probably not that many. Marley Matlin? The Death Who's, what reviewer. was the name of the... Uh, no. <laughs> it's like, uh, Maitland we... McDonough. Maitland McDonough. Why are we Madden, mad at Marley Madden? <laughs> Last week it was Jack. This week it was... <laughs> I know that uh, Marley Madeline's been a long time fan. She's listening right now. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> she's not listening. <laughs> she's reading the subtitles. It's on the right TTY. Now. I yeah. thought you were being funny, but you... <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So then another one by uh, Stephen Ray, and I re- actually really like this one. I'm not really gonna. Uh, but this so from the Philadelphia Inquirer says, "Attend at your own risk." You'll get no help from this quarter, <laughs> which is perfect, I think, because that's exactly how I describe this movie or say to like, you know, what I would say to someone that was like, oh, I was thinking about watching Toxic Avenger. I'd be like, well, <laughs> you should watch it, but uh, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> Mine would go like this. Fuck yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I mean to like, I mean to the normals. <laughs> and while they just stood there with like a grimace on their face, I'd just be laughing like, "This movie's great." Now your girlfriend doesn't like horror movies all that much. What does she think of it? She hated it. Did she hate really? it really? Yeah. Yeah. really? I also tried to watch it with my girlfriend, and she was out about five minutes in. <laughs> wow, she didn't like it, huh? Oh no, hmm. she told me it. Time and again, how much she hated it. Wow. But she just, sat through the whole thing, so yeah. I'll give her credit for that. Yeah. Just wasn't her Where thing. was she supposed to go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm going to go sit alone in your house in some other room. <laughs> That's true. She That's exactly trapped. what my girlfriend did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, we give them options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can yeah. sit in the corner and do nothing if they want to. <laughs> she didn't think it was funny with all the crazy oh. satire? Well, to that first reviewer, fuck you. To that second reviewer, no. The point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not really talking <laughs> shit. He's just, I mean, like I said, that's exactly what I'd say. Like, all right, man, just prepare yourself. Like, yeah. you know, watch the, at your own risk. Here's the way I feel about negative reviews, too. If the negative review said something like, I didn't like it, not my cup of tea, you can't you can't rag on that reviewer. That's mm-hmm. genuinely, the, then, they said yes or no, they said no, I didn't like it, and that's their review. Mm-hmm. It's the ones that try to, like, Tell them how like wrong they were in making yeah, this movie. I completely mm-hmm. disagree. I don't know. I think those are the helpful reviews. I think yeah. a helpful movie's made. You can't go back and like redo it. Like psych. Yeah. Here's Toxic Avenger Four. But I mean, it'll now. tell you why you don't want to see it. Okay, no, so no, no, so, no, but if if the reviewer is saying this movie is is uh, gross and juvenile, they're they're judging it based on their standards. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So if so if I saw, oh, the fucking Divine Sisterhood of, of the ya, Yaya Sisterhood or whatever. Yeah. The Yaya Pants <laughs> and <the> Sisters <laughs> Traveling traveling Pants. Yeah, wh- whatever, whatever that movie Joy is. Luck Club. That I actually saw in the Joy theater. Luck Pants? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I would say it was boring, it was fucking stupid, it didn't make any sense to me. But I'm not that audience. Yeah. You know, I'm not meant for that movie. Mm-hmm. So for a for a reviewer, they should they should try to tell you what's what in a in a objective way. objective way, okay. and I guess it's hard to take yourself out of that sort of thing. But well, but I think what, what I was saying, what Matt was saying, is that if they tell you that, like you know, if like you're specifically going to see like I don't know, like say some shit like uh, Ocean's Eleven or something, you know, like something that's supposed to have like like a plot, like, you know, an established plot or something, and they tell you, like, this plot goes nowhere. <laughs> like, that's helpful. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But when they say, you know... It's childish. Yeah. yeah. The writer did this and that. I'm always like, well, who do you think you are? To just, to criticize a writer, you're not a writer. I'd like to yeah. see your movie. Yeah, Put it to me. Yeah, I don't like when they, like, make it really snarky and snide and yeah. try and... Like, I remember I saw an article... I won't say the website because I'll offend definitely two people. Hey. If I tell you what website <laughs> it was from. But it said, like, five ways to fix the horror movie industry. And I thought, one, it doesn't need fixing. Those movies make a ton of money and they spend, like, uh, you know, shoestring budgets. Just because on them. it makes money doesn't mean it's I'm good. De- yeah, I'm definitely going to disagree <laughs> well, with you there. Why, like, would, why you, would you, would you fix are you something? Saying, okay, but are you saying that, like, uh, what was that movie that we watched, mm-hmm. The Doll Movie? No, what I'm saying to you Annabelle. is Annabelle. Are you saying that Annabelle deserved to make the money that it made? No, but why would you fix it? Because it was fucking terrible. Yeah, it didn't deserve the money, money that it made. Well, and there's plenty of stuff. And here's how I feel about it is, why are you telling me? Go make those movies. Make a million dollars. I'll go see it. 
No, I'm going to make a stupid little article about it. You don't know why? Because I don't have the talent. What they were they written movies, movies and made oh, movies. But they're, but, they're telling, but they're telling you how to... They're telling them how to please the fan. They're still yeah. a fan. I'm tell- if I'm a fan, I'm still going to tell the movie yeah. industry how to please me. If I had a strategy criticism. to yeah. fix... Like, this is how you fix a steakhouse, make a steakhouse better. I would go make that steakhouse. You have, oh, so I you're just going to go... You're going to go make a steakhouse tomorrow? I would I would find a way well, to make, build a steakhouse. If you're going to sit there and tell you people how to fix the movie industry, you better be in the movie industry But doing at least it's well. constructive criticism. It's not like, oh, this was juvenile and stupid. It's like, <laughs> if you want to please us, the fans, then here's what you can do. But they clearly don't know how because then they would be doing it. No, well, they, maybe they don't have the means. But, but beyond that, like, what were the points? Because I'd like to hear this. I didn't oh. read it. It shit pisses me off. <laughs> so you didn't even read the article you created? <laughs> yeah, because don't tell me how to fix it. Go fix it. <laughs> well, see, like, because I have an opinion on how I would, I would fix the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Well, don't fucking give it. But that's that's because what I'm Colby. That's oh, why the people give their opinions. Well, well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't script. I don't have the means to do it. But I would sure like. But I would Why sure like to go. Why don't you just have the means no, to do like, it? Like, Homie can do whatever he wants. He just has the, all the means in the world to, to do it. Are you telling me that every person that made the made movies had the millions of dollars, the budget to make it? They had some. Uh, no, they I had to, or else everybody would just be making Quentin, movies. When Quentin Tarantino made his have, first movie, like, he was be... working at a video store. So how did he afford a million dollar budget? I'm sure he took out loans and shit. No, he went and sold the screenplay. Okay, so... So what I'm saying so is, write that Nightmare on Elm Street screenplay, sell it, they'll make that movie. I totally think if somebody, it. as a fan, as somebody who watches movies, they have every right to tell them, to give them constructive criticism on how they could please us, the fans. They have the right to write whatever they want. I'm just saying they're full of shit because they don't know what they're doing. What do you... I don't see where that criticism comes from. Yeah, that's just so... Because they don't know what to do. If they knew because... how to make, fix the horror industry, they would have fixed it. No, we know how to fix politics, and that's all broken still. No, you could have done because if you knew how to fix it, it would be fixed. <laughs> you fix it. <laughs> if one person knows how to fix something, they can't just go in and do it. They, they have to let other people know, and make people a, have to make the movie, and then I'll be impressed. I'm like that guy fixed it. They did make a movie, though. You know, I'm saying they've written. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they make movies. they make See skits and <laughs> they make some of the best videos I've ever Order seen. In Order in the court. <laughs> well, if they made those videos, why haven't I heard of them? Because they should be incredible. Because you read by the, the title and click the next. Page. By by, they should be incredible by the standards they've created for themselves. Well, they, they should be perfect. Well, they wrote Go John watch Dice him, at the end, which was directed by Don Coscarelli. So that's some horror clout, but. Let's stop there because this battle could rage on <laughs> into the into the dark ages. It could end <clears throat> us. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I I'm, I like I like uh, I like the debate. It's an interesting an interesting thing. Um, I think that you can have an opinion and not necessarily even want to. Maybe they don't even care about the horror industry. They're just throwing out ideas. I think they do care because they wouldn't write the article if they didn't. Sure. But, but, you know, I'm just saying, they don't necessarily have to I'm care. glad you brought that I'm up sure there as my closing on. argument. <laughs> John dies at the end. <laughs> what about it? It's, uh, it's a really good horror movie. It, yeah. I've never seen it, never even heard of it. It's on Netflix. Oh, that, that probably, if you haven't what? heard of it, then that what? probably means that it's not worth the shit. It's because well, it's an independent I mean, movie because they got funding because they didn't that's have a what, studio backing them. That's what a successful movie is, is when I hear about it. <laughs> that's what makes a movie successful. <laughs> So, uh, that's the, all it takes is you need to hear about it? Yes. Well, I mean, it, it can't call movie successful if it says that it's not even a theater. Is that a success? Yeah. How? Okay, Colby's gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, let's move on. I thought, it's delirious I, from food poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's there's talkers and there's doers. These guys are talkers. And they've done. They, all right, that's they it. Do, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, all right, all right. Let's 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 stop. Yeah. Okay, let's get meta about murder with Matt's themes and tropes. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, this movie just took all the tropes and took them to, like, their extreme logical conclusion. Like, you know, weak female characters, so they made the main female <laughs> love interest deaf and extremely stupid. And the other one was blind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I was talking about the blind one. Well, oh, one of them was one deaf and one was blind. Yeah, one's yeah. Blind, one's deaf. Mm-hmm. They were all, like, yeah, just... That's true. I you never know, thought of that. They just took it to the extreme. I've seen other movies do this in a, a lot more like serious context. Like, did you guys see the Austrian film Funny Games? Mm-hmm. 
Oh man, it's a it's a very bleak horror movie. Like they basically made it in response to American horror movies, and that they thought they were just so gory, and they lacked a point. Hmm. And so they made that one as a satire, and it's. I guess to put that in context, too, like, um, in Germany, their rating system is kind of the opposite. They don't really care too much about sex and nudity, but violence is something they crack down on. So yeah. Germany is, like, our opposite dimension? Pretty much, yeah. They're <laughs> an alternate weird dimension. Is there a German Abe out there? <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because it actually got an American remake, which completely destroys the point of the first movie being made the fact that they, thought they anytime could there's it, an american remake it destroys the point of like the movie. whole reason they made it was to satire american movies and then they remade it as an american movie are you kidding that's yeah. kind of cool though we can't let them win yeah <laughs> and the colors don't run and what's <laughs> like awful is it wasn't even as like extreme as the the austrian one like in that this this couple and they have this kid and they're the, yeah they're these parents they're forced to kill their own kid with a shotgun yeah Really gruesome stuff. Hmm. Was he like? It's interesting. Yeah, it's just these people show up at their house, and for no reason they start terrorizing this family. There's been mm-hmm. a few movies like that that I've seen recently. The Strangers, the Strangers was one. Yeah. yeah. That was so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to think. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was that other one with uh, that dude from from what's that vampire movie? Oh, that guy uh, I can't think purge. of from that movie I can't think of. No, Purge is that saying? Is it Ethan Hawke? No, it was the. Um, remember the guy who turned into half werewolf, half vampire. Oh yeah, but and, I can never tell you his name. What? Uh, yeah. That's in uh, Liv Underworld. Tyler. Yeah, Underworld. Yeah. But oh. it was that guy, and I think Liv Scott Tyler. Foley. Yeah, and some and some people just showed up with weird bags on their heads and started killing them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, strange. That's strangers. Oh, what's that one with all the animals? Oh, you're animals. next. You're next. next. That yeah. was a good yeah. one. Yeah. 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 I, like I never that saw. It. I heard that was actually like a better. Like it seemed like a better version of Strangers. Yeah, yeah. Because because like, yeah, the Strangers didn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. And like at the end, like as they're walking away, he's like, "Next time it'll be easier." It could have been so easy. You could have just <laughs> killed him. Like you just walked in there and like fucking stabbed him. Like what yeah. was? <laughs> at least with. With your next, you got some sort of like uh, understanding of to what they were up to. Yeah, there was a clear, there was motivation for what they did. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Any other themes and stuff? Oh uh, no, I, I thought it was a really great satire. Other than that. Okay. In closing, to feed the sun god with junk food movie dialogue, we offer unto you the Quetzal Quoto. <laughs> Who got a good quote? I've got five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's, let's pray, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but dead retards and charred lards. <laughs> I'm just a street whore who has, who knows the key to interdimensional travel. That's my favorite <laughs> one. Um, I'm the baddest bodiless motherfucker in Amartville. <laughs> and I'll be back, motherfucker. If there's a sequel, I'll be back. <laughs> I, uh, my favorite part was uh, when uh, Noxy rips off the cop's arms and he's about to strangle the girl with them. And the cop says, watch out, he's armed! Yeah. That was good. <laughs> oh, that was fucking great. Oh, um, yeah. A man who loved puns. <laughs> My favorite was, he said, Noxie, what's on your fingers? He goes, nose blood. <laughs> and oh, he yeah, drops the, 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 the yeah. snow globe. The yeah. snow globe, yeah. <laughs> the whole Citizen Kane angle. I didn't, I didn't get that. Was he, like, snorting coke or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was doing coke, so he had no Nose blood. <laughs> is that so? Is the title also a reference to Citizen Kane too? Yeah, Citizen Toxic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Citizen Kane. I never saw that movie. Citizen I Kane. I heard it's all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've heard it's the greatest movie ever made. Whatever. Yeah. I think I think because uh, we had to watch this in school, and I think that um, it was just it was just ahead of its time in the way it was filmed. Yeah. Like you might watch it and not be blown away, but yeah, back that's... then they were like, "Holy shit, he's changing camera angles. He's he's got the camera in the floor doing all kinds of weird stuff." Yeah, same thing with the cabinet of Doctor Caligari or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, have DVD. I, I think most things like that are disappointing. I watched that Metropolis movie a while back, mm-hmm. and that's another one that's like. Yeah. And it's just like a bunch of weird people like dancing around <laughs> and shit, and like one like turning into robots, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I thought the anime remake they did of that was pretty good. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Okay, does anybody have any last uh, words? Anything they want to talk about? Any upcoming horror movies anyone's excited for? Phantasm Five. Oh, oh, when is that what, coming out? Uh, uh, soon, I hope. I still haven't heard the exact date, but it's it's this year. So, hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll be excited for that. Um, my 
G.I. Joe figure subscription finally started coming in. If there's any toy collectors out there. Nope, you're the only me. one. Eh? <laughs> me, me, me and Abe. Yeah. The two of us. <laughs> the whole one. <clears throat> okay, uh, that is the end of Meet Your Monsters uh, for this week. Thanks to my friends for hanging out with me. That's you guys. And Jack. And, and Jack. Well, he's the he's, listener at home. He's yeah. hanging out with us in spirit. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about him. I've never met him, but <laughs> here's a good dude. Yeah. He's awesome. And thanks to you at home for listening. That would be the Jack. That's Jack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if you want to follow along next week. Oh, and hopefully Sarah is listening. Oh, um, yeah, Sarah. I guess we miss you, Sarah. Come back to us. Yeah. Come back soon. There's a Sarah-sized hole in this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, next week's movie will be, which we're going to watch right now, The People Under the Stairs. Oh, yes. nice. Yes. <laughs> High five.